Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at sketching quadratic equations. Now, this is something some of you may have seen before in GCSE Maths, and the way you will have probably done it is by taking a table of x and y values, plotting these as coordinates on a graph, and then joining these points together to get your quadratic. Now, in A level we're going to do this slightly differently. Okay, We're just going to find some key pieces of information about the quadratic graph, and use these pieces of information to help us draw a sketch. And we're going to look at what those pieces of information are in a second. But first, we're going to look at some key properties of quadratic graphs. So, say we take a generic quadratic equation, for example, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, okay, where a, b, and c are just going to be numbers. And importantly, a cannot be equal to zero, because if a was equal to zero, then our x squared term would disappear, and we would no longer be dealing with a quadratic graph. Okay, So, a, b, and c are just numbers, where a is not equal to zero. Now, if our value of a, so our coefficient of x squared, if that is greater than zero, so it's positive, then the shape of our quadratic graph is going to be something like this. It's going to be sort of a U shape like that. Okay, so that's when our a value is greater than zero. If, however, our value of a, so our coefficient of x squared is negative, then the shape of our graph is going to be sort of like an n. It's going to be slightly different. It's going to be an n shape, okay, like so. So that's the first thing we need to be aware of. The second thing is, well, we call the points where the graph intersects with the x-axis, so I'll color these points in in red, these points here, we call these points the roots of the equation, okay? That's something to be familiar with, that term. They're called the roots of the equation. And it just so happens that these quadratic graphs have a line of symmetry, okay? You can kind of see it already. I'll draw the one on in red here. So say the line of symmetry is right down the middle like that. Now, it just so happens that that line of symmetry happens to be directly in the middle of the two roots of the equation. Okay, and that's the same for this graph over here on the right as well. So if I draw on a line of symmetry like so, and I know this isn't perfect, they're just sketches. Another thing is we call the minimum point of the graph this point here. So if we have a positive coefficient of x squared, then the point where the graph takes its minimum value, so I've colored, done the red circle on that as well, we call that the minimum, okay, like so. And in a similar way, the point where the graph reaches its maximum point, so if we have a coefficient of x squared, which is negative, we have a maximum, so that's going to be somewhere up here, we call that the maximum point, okay? So these are terms and things to be aware of. So we've got a minimum and a maximum. Now, it just so happens that this minimum or maximum point also happens to be at the point of symmetry. So that minimum or maximum is going to be directly in between the two roots, okay? So these are the pieces of information we need to be familiar with when it comes to quadratic graphs. So let's take a look at a question now. So here we have to sketch the graph of y equals x squared minus 2x minus 15. Okay, so what do we need to know? Well, the first piece of information that would be useful to know is where the graph is going to intersect with the y-axis, where the graph is going to pass through the y-axis. Okay, and that's really easy to find. That's just going to happen when our x coordinate is equal to zero. Okay, hopefully that makes sense because when x is equal to zero, well, it's going to be here the graph is going to be on the y-axis. So this substitute into this equation for our quadratic, x equals zero. So we can say when x equals zero, y is going to be equal to, well, zero squared, zero, minus two times zero, zero, minus 15. And so our quadratic graph is going to pass through the y-axis at the point y equals 15, or negative 15, sorry. Another key piece of information that would be good to know is where the graph is going to intersect with the x-axis. So we're going to find the roots of this quadratic. And in a similar way, that's going to be when our value of y is equal to zero, because when y is equal to zero, the graph is going to be touching the x-axis. So we can say, well, this time, when our value of y is equal to zero, we have zero is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 15. And so we need to solve this quadratic. We need to find the values of x such that if we substitute them in, it's going to equal zero, okay? And I've got three previous videos on my Preparing for A-Level Maths playlist on this. So we've got completing the square, we've got factorizing, and we could also use the quadratic formula. So just for the sake of this, because it's quite easy, I'm just going to factorize it. And so if we factorize this, uh, we will get what we have, x minus 5 and x plus 3, okay? So we factorized it. Now, we've got two things multiplied together to give zero. So either this is equal to zero, this is equal to zero, or they both are, right? So say our x minus five was equal to zero. Well, we could add five to both sides and we get one root at x is equal to five. So let me plot that point on over here. The other one would be when x plus three was equal to zero and subtracting three from both sides, 
we get x is equal to negative 3. So we've now found the two roots of this quadratic uh, and the point where it passes through the y-axis. So the final thing we want to find out is the minimum point. And I know it's going to be a minimum because my coefficient of x squared is positive. It's positive 1. So it's going to be a u-shape and it's going to have a minimum. So remember what I said, the minimum point is going to be at the point of symmetry. So it's going to be right in the middle of negative 3 and positive 5. So what is the midpoint of negative 3 and positive 5? Well, to find that, you could just add them, the two together. So negative 3 plus 5, divide it by 2, and that's going to give us positive 1. So the line of symmetry of this quadratic is going to be at the point x equals 1. So we know the point is at x equals 1, but what about its y value? What is the y value of the minimum point? Well, I'm just going to quickly get rid of this working out, so we've got a bit of space. Well, if I know it's going to be when x equals positive 1, well, I can substitute that into my equation of this quadratic, and that will give me the corresponding y value. So we can say at x equals positive 1, y is equal to 1 squared minus 2 lots of 1 minus 15, which is going to be equal to 1 subtract 2 subtract 15, which is going to give us negative 16. Okay, and so now we can plot the final point, which is at 1, negative 16. And so now if I connect all of these points together, it's going to be terrible. It's not a very good sketch at all, uh, but that is a sketch of the quadratic graph. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Now, there is also another way to find the coordinates of the minimum point, and that's using completing the square. Okay, so say we'll first complete the square, and then we'll look at how it's going to help us. So the first thing we're going to want to do is complete the square for this quadratic equation. And so that's really easy. If you're unfamiliar with this, you can watch the video I've made on that earlier in the playlist. I'll link it in the description. So the first step is we're going to look at the coefficient of x squared. As it's positive 1, it's really easy. We're just going to write a bracket. And inside, we're going to write x. And then we're going to look at the coefficient of x in the original quadratic. In this case, it's negative 2. We're going to divide that by 2 and get negative 1. So we've got x minus 1, and we're going to square all that. Now, if we were to expand this, okay, we would currently have x squared minus 2x plus 1 and we want it to be equal to the original quadratic. So we've got x squared, x squared, minus 2x, minus 2x, this looks good. However, the constant on the end is wrong. So at the moment we have plus one, but we want it to read minus 15. So we could adjust this to make it correct by just subtracting 16 from the whole thing. So I'm gonna do that now and I'll get rid of all of these highlights as well. So minus 16. Again, if that's too quick, I recommend you go and watch my video I've made on completing the square. So now we've got it in this completed square form, how does this help us, okay? And it helps us due to graph transformations. And if you're unfamiliar with them, I'll be making a video on them later on in this playlist. But for now, I'll try and explain it. So say we take a x, y plane. So I'm gonna draw the uh, coordinate axes, x and y. And on it, I'm gonna draw a sketch of y equals x squared, the most basic sort of quadratic like so. And I'll say f of x equals x squared. So let's see, using graph transformations, what this completing the square is representing, right? So the first thing you'll notice is we've got this x minus 1. So if I do f of x minus 1, like so, we'll get our x minus 1 all squared. And in graph transformations, if we do f of x minus 1, that's going to shift our graph one unit to the right. So let's shift it one unit to the right, okay? And be aware that now our minimum point has moved to the right by 1. So now our minimum point is at 1, 0. And then finally, you can see we've subtracted 16 from the whole thing. So in terms of our graph transformation, if we have f of x minus 1 minus 16, this minus 16 is going to lower our graph down by 16 units. OK, so let's move the graph down by 16. And so now our minimum point is going to be, well, one unit to the right and negative 16 down. And you can see that matches up with what we got for our minimum point. OK, and so once it's in a completed square form, you can sort of take the negative of this and say, well, it's at the point 1 negative 16. And that's how you would do a sketch of a quadratic graph. So hopefully this video is useful. If it was, like, subscribe and share. You can go over to my channel for tons more A-level maths tutorials and I'll link the preparing for A-level maths playlist in the description. Thanks for watching.